The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Perez and, and Zerah whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amimadad, Amimadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Solomon, Solomon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah. Abijah the father of Aspha, Aspha the, became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, Joram the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtel. Shealtel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abuid. Abuid became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim, Achim the father of Eliud, Eliud the father of Eleazar, Eleazar became the father of Mathen, Mathen the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. So I think all of you have heard the expression, you know, uh, maybe a, a child only a mother could love. Have you ever heard that expression? Yes, no. This is like a reading only a Bible scholar could love, you know. Uh, but there is a lot to love in this reading. There really is. There is a tremendous uh, amount of, of uh, Jewish history that's all kind of given to us to, to ponder. Matthew begins his gospel. These are the opening words of the gospel of Matthew. And I did hear one scripture scholar say, how did anybody get to chapter two? Is this, if this is how chapter one starts, you know? And so it's like, didn't he need to, he needed to talk to his editor about having a, a, a like a, a good start to, to get people interested. But it is an incredibly rich kind of uh, story of Jesus's genealogy. Who are your people? Where did you come from? How many of you are aristocrats? You know, that's the thing about America is, you know, one of the, one of the great challenges of the American experience experiment was that in Europe, there was a tremendous amount of that kind of aristocracy and, and kings and queens and dukes and earls and all of that stuff. And you had to be somebody. But in Christianity, it's never been about being somebody. Never. When we look at Jesus's genealogy, what we're gonna find 
is that Jesus' genealogy roots his humanity in the messiness of human life. I guarantee you, whether you know it or not, you have some skeletons in the family closet somewhere. Probably not too far back. But as we open the family closet of Jesus and look in here, I'm just going to pull out one little example, and, and many of you may already know this. Um, Jesus came to save the whole world, right? Not just, the, not just the nation of Israel. He came to expand God's family to include the Gentiles as well. And that's written into this, into this genealogy right here. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. And Ruth was not a Jew. Ruth was a Gentile. Ruth would have been unclean. But there she is, right in Jesus' ge genealogy. And oh, by the way, then we come to the next line, the next line of the genealogies. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Who was the wife of Uriah? Bathsheba, an adulteress, an adulteress who committed adultery with David. And there she is. Her name isn't mentioned, but she's alluded to. So who are you? And who am I? You know, we are also kind of in this, we have an unfortunate genealogy, okay? All of us do. We all, we're, none of us have this perfectly pristine history of aristocracy and pure blood. And that's part of the point of the incarnation. And when I was reading the opening prayer this morning, the collect this morning, I said uh, that we would share in the divinity of Christ who came to share in our humanity. I don't know if y'all heard that or not. But it really resonated with me because it's what Deacon Mike is going to say when he pours the water into the wine. It's part of every Mass. That Jesus came to take on our broken humanity. And that is written in giant letters in the genealogy. That he came to take on our sin, our messiness, and redeem it and elevate us to elevate you. So, yes, I think we all would love to think that our, our, our family heritage and history is pristine and beautiful, but if Jesus's wasn't, chances are yours, is it? Okay, but that's okay. Jesus came to heal it and elevate it and transform it. And this day we are grateful uh, for, for that healing gift of our Lord.